I, I I'd been texted by Brian that he was watching Going Clear. So I thought, well, let me just let me just punch this up and see what it looks like. I, I watched the first couple of minutes. I got sucked in. Now, here's here's the hilarious part. When I came upstairs to watch The Shield, uh, Veronica and her husband were going to watch last week's Better Call Saul, which I'd already seen. So I'm like, oh, OK, you, you guys have fun. I'm going to go upstairs and watch The Shield. So I start watching Going Clear. At one point, I pause it for some reason, and I can hear the TV downstairs. They're watching Going Clear. Oh, that's hilarious. Uh, and so, so, so what caused them to defect? I guess they saw the Twitter buzz and were they, like, let's yeah, check same, it out. Same sort of thing. They heard people talking about it and thought, well, let's, uh, let's check this out, see what it's like. Yeah, we'll go into more detail, but I think it's safe to say it. Like, I, I thought it was chilling and wonderful. And, I, and this is somebody who's read, uh, you know, I read uh, Inside Scientology. I've been following this this insane story, you know, Operation Clambake back in the late 90s. I would go to that website all the time. Um, it is uh, a mysterious story. And uh, we'll talk about the nature of the storytelling that they do. Um, going Clear is a documentary that was on HBO. As I mentioned on the main Court Killer show, I was going to watch The Shield and I had been texted by Brian that he was going to watch Going Clear, so I just kind of took a look at it for a couple of minutes and got sucked in and watched the whole thing. Uh, the folks I was staying with here were going to watch Better Call Saul, which I had already watched. Next thing I know, I pause mine for a second, and I hear that they are also watching uh, Going Clear. Uh, Brian, why is this captivating people's imagination so much? Part of it is that it's been brewing for a long time. In the last, uh, at the end of the last decade, beginning of this decade, we saw a couple of important books, one of them going clear, the other one inside Scientology, uh, that that finally put names to stories and released a lot of inside details that was backed up by documentary evidence. Uh, oftentimes you have important books that don't get seen, they don't get the traction, they don't get seen everywhere. Uh, like a bad movie will often outperform exposure on an idea or topic 10 to one over a good book. So knowing that this was something that legally HBO felt, they, they had 150 lawyers is what they say, worked on this and they felt insulated. And you can tell if you've read the book that there are some stories that made the cut, other stories that they didn't feel like it was worth the risk on. But what happens overall, I found to be a fairly accurate representation. If you've read these news stories and read the background on it, it gets a lot right. Now, it's not all there, but it, uh, it I found it haunting. And I would love to hear because uh, I'm too close to all this. I've been obsessed with this for 20 years. So I want to hear from you guys mainly about what you guys thought and saw. Jackie, I'm going to let you go first. Um, Nothing. I, I actually wasn't surprised. Uh, there were there were bits and pieces of it that uh, in dialogue um, that of, you know, of, of previous real newsreels or other videos that they had where I heard people talking and I just said, what the he heck did they just say? What what did I just hear? I don't even understand what these people are trying to say. And, you know, and it's it, it, that I mean, but that's the case with the whole thing. And, um, you know. I, you know, I've spent a lot of time out in Los Angeles and I, 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 I had the privilege of taking the tour of the museum on Hollywood Boulevard. I don't know if any of you have done that, but it's completely free. And it was one of the creepiest experiences of my life. <laughs> Wait, oh, so, so, so they, oh, out. this is the, uh, this is the, uh, psych psychiatry museum, right? Where they try to freak you out about psychiatry. Is that the one? Oh, no, no, no. It's all Ron L. L, L. Hubbard. Uh, oh, it's, L. Ron it's, Hubbard, It's yeah. his face everywhere staring at you in different directions. And, uh, you know, and actually they got me to hold the E-meter <laughs> because I was the only one with, you know, that wasn't scared enough to hold it. And it did nothing. <laughs> they said, well, obviously you're not thinking of something that really uh, depresses you. And, you know, I mean, anyways, the, the whole experience and what I know of, of on that end and the way they've kind of bullied the media around and the way they portray, um, you know, Scientology. I just, it, the, there was nothing about this documentary that actually surprised me. Uh, did, what about you guys? Uh, Tom? Uh, here's, here's where I was with this, uh, because uh, like Brian, I have also uh, been very fascinated with the phenomenon of Scientology. I actually went to one of the Dianetics places and took the personality test when I was in Washington, D.C. in 1993. I still have my results, which were, you're too critical of things. You need to, like, just accept stuff more, which immediately made me go, ha, that's exactly what I'd say if I wanted to convince someone to just accept any BS that I gave them. Uh, 
I somehow later on in life, I think a friend did it as a joke, got on a mailing list, started getting their magazines and started seeing all of this like terminology that you hear in this documentary about OT3 and the bridge and, get, and getting clear and being audited uh, and, and was fascinated to the point at one point where I was talking to Eileen about it and she's like, stop, just stop. You're scaring me. Uh, not because she was worried I was going to join it, but just because I was getting too into it. So I pulled back from it a while, but I was really impressed as a longtime unwilling viewer of their printed materials <laughs> with how much access they got to documentation and video from within the church to illustrate stuff. Oh, you're At talking about same... going clear. You're talking about uh, the documentary. Yes. I, I thought you were still talking about the magazines that you were getting. That was the, No, the magazines yeah. have 100% access. <laughs> yes, to, that's why I was confused material. why you'd be so, surprised. Yes, I was impressed by going clear how much access they had to the materials to show in the documentary. And I, at the same time, felt that it could have been done better. Uh, and it's not, I, I, I was trying to walk this through in my mind was I watching it. Like sometimes they take some cheap shots that aren't necessary. So they are talking about at one point, the guy's being held in a trailer and it's covered in bugs and they show a picture of ants. I get it. It's a visual description that's supposed to make me feel more like I understand what's going on. But it felt like it was shoving it in my face. Like those aren't the ants. I don't know if the ants were that number. Like there were some places where I felt they over dramatized the situation. Uh, and probably most people who are prone to want to criticize Scientology won't care one bit. But it reminded me a little bit of what Michael Moore does, where he like really exaggerates to make a point. I felt they did that a few times. And I didn't think they need to because they had such good source material to work from. Yeah, unfortunately, like to make a documentary and to make it a spectacle, there's there's so many different vectors. There's uh, what stories are the best stories. And then they're like, what stories are clearly sourced? And then they're like, what stories are clearly sourced and uh, the best ones and uh, are not a giant legal target put on our forehead? You know, what targets can we go for? What are we protected in? What are we not? Also, which of these stories do we have appropriate original video from? Which of these, you know, what what aspects can we get? You know, like. Like it's interesting that amazing shot of the Scientology centers, uh, all drones, because you can operate those from far away and just fly in, fly your drone around and get your footage and get the hell out of there. Although for a commercial enterprise, it's actually against the FAA regulations. I, but I guess uh, HBO's lawyers were okay with it. I, I thought the exact same thing. I, I, <laughs> that's amazing. So uh, on top of that, uh, I will say that there are some stories that are missing. I will say that uh, there are some moments that are absolutely haunting like chills up my spine when you when spanky talks about her escape grabbing her daughter and and literally last minute you know walking out with a bodyguard acting like of course it's okay i'm gonna give my daughter to whatever and then just saying hit the gas get out of there i mean total goosebumps but for me one of the the interesting stories is uh and the part i care the least about is all the nutty beliefs of scientology because you know there are plenty of other religions that all have their nutty belief the part that to me is fascinating is the uh, the ability to entrap people and to as they make the point in the in the show to make them their own jailer and uh, specifically the transformation when L. Ron Hubbard goes into hiding and eventually dies and David Miscavige comes in. Uh, if you read Inside Scientology, Inside Scientology is actually fairly uh, uh, play portrays LRH as almost a, a sympathetic character uh, in that he's somebody who wanted to provide an alternative, like an open source uh, uh, alternative to um, uh, psychiatry, uh, and then eventually just, you know, went too far off the deep end. But David Miscavige came up in the science in Scientology as the claims made in there. And uh, and there's this one hunting and I forget which one of the characters said it, but they it was his best friend. And I didn't learn all the names, but he says that, that he came out of a room once and his eyes were on fire and he grinned and he says, I get it now. Power isn't granted, it's assumed. And then that was the beginning of David Miscavige just acting like the boss and bullying people and making it happen. Um, I don't know. It To me, having read all that stories and been enchanted by it, to see that footage, that, interior, that internal documentation at the rallies or whatever of this guy setting up this almost you know, very uh, almost Hitler-esque, you know, uh, fascist uh, background with him in the spotlight in the middle. It, it was chilling. I thought it was fascinating. 
Yeah, I agree. It was a it was a fascinating documentary. If for nothing else, the access, uh, because like you, I mean, I'll even go so far as to say not only the the beliefs, but also the 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 cult like aspects are not new. I mean, the 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 uh, Jonestown massacres happened under very similar circumstances, and Scientology hasn't done anything quite so dramatic, right? So there's even worse stories out there. But what's interesting about Scientology is its progression, is its characters, is the fact that it proceeds from science fiction and tried to walk the boundary between being both science and religion and had that fight with the IRS uh, and the terminology right out of a science fiction novel. And like, and you wonder like, okay, how do people end up believing that? And I think you're right. I think that's what this documentary told very well. One of the most effective things they did in this documentary, and I think it's one of the most important things that that is mentioned in the books, but it's really hammered on, on this, is they break down the fact that Scientology only has one tactic. Anyone who disagrees is fair game, attack, never defend, label people suppressive persons, and so on. Uh, and by detailing all of that, they really have taken the air out of Scientology's response to their documentary. Because when you type in going clear in Google, the number one ad up top, here, give it a try. You might have to open up a uh, uh, a incognito browser or something. But if you, if you just type in um, uh, going clear on Google, uh, for me, it showed up. Oh, they must have re rejiggered it. There was an ad up top saying the truth about uh, about it, and um, uh, it it was a Scientology run site that was all just attacking, throwing. Uh, you know, it, it, they have all these websites. Who is so and so? Who is blah blah blah? And it just they just rip apart their family. They say his father had ethical questions about some medical practices, and uh, it. It's all textbook. And once you see that, once you see the man behind the curtain, it uh, it affects the way you recognize all that. Votes on whether Tom Cruise takes over eventually? Uh, zero. Zero. They seem to be trying to apply that that was the plan, though. Uh, no, I, I, I think that is pretty clear. Like, Tom Cruise is the power and derives all the benefits, and David Miscavige is his... Um, his 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 dog, you know, that that, yeah. that that goes to war on his behalf. He's probably pretty happy with the current thing he's got going. Jackie, any last thoughts about going clear before we wrap this up? Uh, no, no. Um, it was enjoyable. And I, I really uh, any basically when anytime uh, HBO has a documentary, I can't resist. I've got to check it out. They do tend to be really good. They have a good track record there. 